Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about juniors and seniors. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how can a junior convince a senior developer to use object-oriented concepts? Well, that depends what type of senior are you dealing with and what type of problem are you dealing with because the sort of the issue with junior and senior and so forth is that there is this perception of course that a junior always knows less than a senior and there's always this idea that just because you have more years than somebody else you are better at the thing that they're doing which I know for a fact and I think a few people who have worked with different types of profiles over the years are going to be able to say that no that's actually not the case you can be an idiot and completely incompetent even after 20 years of uh, experience depending on how we define that of course and so it really comes down to two things are you right to suggest the object-oriented concepts? And are you dealing with an individual who is still open to learning? That's what it comes down to. You see, it might be the case that you are right. It might be that you're dealing with a senior that doesn't really know any better or has always done things in a certain way and just doesn't really reflect so much about it. I can give you an example of myself where um, I was told this actually yesterday, which was, I mean, this was another, like this this guy had been working for a few years, so I, he was fine with it, but he was still sort of nervous because at the time I was the lead for the team that he was in. And as you can imagine, any whenever you're going to suggest something to someone who is, I mean, I'm not even his manager, I'm just the guy who is, well, let's not get into that. But of course, it's a little bit of tension where I, uh, in this case, it was React that we were working in. And so the way that I always defined my components was that I do like a const and then I specifically used like react.fc for functional component and put in like the generic for properties and so forth. So I basically create a lambda function for everything I do an ES6 lambda function, which is an anti-pattern, he, he tells me. And I kind of go, okay. Can you and then because I mean I don't even have to ask him. He shows me a link showing that actually you and using an ES5 function might be a more idiomatic way of doing this thing, defining it at least from like how and to me that it looked really weird because I'd never really done it that way, but it turns out that actually there was was some community support for that thing. And he was right, actually. It's and uh, because I had actually myself reached a few situations where this was actually not a good way. I actually had to convert to using the ES5 function when I wanted to use, gen use generics and things like that, right? So it turns out that actually he had some valid points, even though in this scenario I have tons of experience working with React in this uh, in this case, and I felt I had like a pretty good way of working, but. I also understood that actually he's right. This is actually a better way of doing it. So he, I told him, can you help me now? Because I think that you're right. I think we should do this. It's just that my muscle memory, like, you know, because when I work on a problem, I don't always remember. It takes a little bit of transition getting used to relearning things, right? Can we set up a lint rule with ESLint? that fixes this, that tells me that I did wrong, like just shows me an error if I define it in my old way of doing it, so that I can remember, like I don't have to, because otherwise you're gonna have to check, check every single time. And I don't want to put you in that situation where you have to repeat it to me and always see like, oh shit, now I have to tell him again that he did a, made a mistake, right? Just put a lint rule for it. And so he did. And now I almost always start with doing the old style and then the linter kicks in and goes ah you're not supposed to do that oh yeah 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 i was supposed to do it the other way and so i relearn it if you are in that situation where you actually have a valid case for object oriented concept where it actually makes sense and there is some backing you have something to bring up to the table where you can sort of prove you know you can present some type of I'm not saying proof but it helps if you have a, re a good reason behind using object-oriented concepts, specifics are always good, 
present that information in a non-hostile, you know, just, hey, actually, I see that we're doing this, but I found these articles, so I found like these references, or like I think about it this way, and then just present your case to the other developer. And if you are lucky, this will be a person who is going to be willing to learn. And they're going to look at that and say, actually, you know what, that actually does make a lot of sense. If you are unlucky, they're going to dismiss you and just say, no, actually, no, no, I don't care about that stuff, even when it might be the case to do so. If you're super lucky, they're going to go, actually, I have this information that you just presented to me, but here's why I think we should do it this way instead, or rather this is why, and they will teach you something in return. And maybe you are the one who should consider the point of the senior and so forth, but we should never default to that because I am, uh, I'm a strong believer of that uh, uh, old merits definitely has an effect on people and you know people who do well and like have a history of being senior or senior or whatever like successful and so forth they should absolutely be respected for the achievements that they've had but we should never get to a point where you do not have to prove your point just because you used to be uh, you've done something for a very long time or you used to, you have been right many times before etc etc never get to a point where a junior doesn't have the have a voice just because the senior is going to always be right just because they're senior because that I've never seen that to turn out all that well in the long term. So what I want you to take away from this is that the way that you convince a senior developer to use any concept object oriented or whatever is the same way you should convince anybody. Make your case go and find some materials or like if it's just you maybe you have a crazy idea present it like a crazy idea hey i was thinking could we try this thing and then you present the proof of concept or something sort of concrete so you sort of can because it's really important to relay your idea because some people are visual thinkers and some people can like me just sort of you know oh you explain it to me and then i sort of understand and sometimes i forget that where it makes me like talk about the actually super abstract concept and people I, I i actually get lost in my explanation because i'm basically i have a picture in my head and i try to explain the picture to other people and they don't have that picture of course and so i can't transfer the knowledge i have to do a little presentation or a little code sample or something like that to show how i'm thinking and then present it and if you're lucky as I said, it's a person who's going to sort of see your point or at least be open to try it out, etc, etc. It doesn't matter if it's a senior or a junior. If you are unlucky, you're dealing with a person who is fully taught, set in their ways, doesn't care, etc, etc. And in that situation, there's not much you can do, unfortunately. But if you're lucky, they're going to listen. And if you're extremely lucky, they're going to come back to you and say, actually, I have this way of doing it and the reason I'm doing it is because of and now you have the opportunity to learn something from the other person. Have a great day.